and welcome to another teaching by 119 Ministries. Our ministry teaches that the whole Bible is still true and directly relevant in our lives. If you would like to know more on what we believe and teach, please visit us at testeverything.net. We hope that you enjoy studying and testing the following teaching. Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we will go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. The disciples caught nothing. Though they had worked all night long, they came up with absolutely nothing. Then Yeshua told them to put their net on the other side of the boat. <laughs> Common sense would say that's only a difference of 10 to 12 feet. If there's no fish on this side of the boat, odds are there are no fish on that side of the boat either. But we must remember, we don't serve a God who deals in odds. Let's face facts. Odds are a sea doesn't open up and allow people to walk through on dry ground. Odds are Fire doesn't come down from heaven to consume a sacrifice and all the water that's been poured on it in front of 450 Baal prophets. <laughs> Odds are a little shepherd boy doesn't defeat a giant with a slingshot. Odds are an axe head doesn't float because someone puts a stick in the water. Get the picture? We're not talking about odds. We're talking about Yahweh, the maker of the universe. They caught nothing all night. This isn't like catching nothing with a rod and reel. This is catching nothing with a huge net. Talk about discouraging. Then Yeshua tells them to put out on the other side of the boat. You can't help but wonder what they were thinking. I remember one time seeing a cartoon picture that showed the side view of a man digging. He was way underground and began tunneling himself sideways. However, the cartoon showed the man giving up and walking away from where he had stopped. The image showed him very exhausted and drained. The problem was that the man could not see that he was just a few feet from reaching a treasure beyond reason. It was actually a very sad image, yet one that could most likely ring true with so many believers today. How close have we been to a victory in our lives, yet because we didn't see any results, we just gave up. If you are anything like me, you like to see results. Even if you put just a little bit of effort into something, then you want to see at least a little bit of progress. Whatever you invest, you expect the return to be equal at the same time. Much like painting, paint a little, you see a little. Paint a lot, <laughs> you see a lot. But life doesn't always work that way especially when it comes to the things of the Father. Sometimes we simply need to persevere, just keep on keeping on. Yet all too often believers give up just before the victory is reached. Much like the man in the cartoon, he had worked and worked and yet saw nothing. He continued working, yet still he found nothing. Finally, he gave up. He figured it was of no value. How many times have we given up on what the Father has told us to do? What if the disciples didn't put out the nets on the other side of the boat? That's something we'll never know because they did. Now, here's the funny thing. Let's look at the time when some of the disciples were first called by Yeshua. Compare. Luke chapter 5. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, 
He said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So they pulled their boats on the shore, left everything, and followed him. The story is extremely similar, but it happened at the beginning of Yeshua's ministry and was the event that made them choose to follow him. <laughs> Yet notice that it was not regarding anything for Yeshua's ministry. It was for them, then resulting in them all following Yeshua. They were at his side for all of his ministry, learning, growing, eating, and drinking, constantly with Yeshua. Then, after Yeshua died and rose again, for some reason, they went back to fishing. But even in this, Yeshua reached out to them. What did they do? They listened and did what he said. The result? Blessing. And to think that this was just regarding one fishing trip that they most likely shouldn't have even been on. How much more so should we not give up in following what he tells us to do in our everyday life? Even when you may think that it's of no use, even when you may feel you've done all you can, even when it seems that everything you've done up to that point has gained you nothing, even when you may feel you've hit a dead end, don't give up on what the Father is doing in your life. Stick to it. Stay with it. Run the course. It's not always easy. In fact, Many times in the scriptures, we see where the father came through at just the last moment. Like that when Abraham had his knife in the air to kill Isaac before he was interrupted by the angel. The door to the ark was closed by Yahweh on the same day the waters began flooding the earth. Yahweh may miss a lot of opportunities to be early, but he's never late. How many times have we been so close but yet so far away. Did we stay faithful to the end, or did we walk away disappointed, not realizing just how close we actually could have been? Just do what he says and put your net on the other side of the boat. In time, his time, the blessing will come. We hope you've enjoyed this message. Remember, continue to test everything. Shalom. The Apostle Paul, a proclaimed Pharisee turned champion of the faith, writing 13 letters which would later become the pillars of Christian doctrine. Millions today use Paul to teach the changing of the law of God, despite the fact that other scriptures declare something quite contrary to the common interpretations of his writings. King David tells us that the law of God is freedom. But many believe Paul said the law of God is slavery. But Paul also said that we should follow the law of God. And he said that he delights in the law of God. But he also said that we are not under the law. This may be completely new to you. You may have never considered any of this. Welcome to The Pauline Paradox, a modern theological reality in which many turn a blind eye. We confront this paradox head on and seek, once and for all, to understand the true Hebraic context in which his words were originally authored, 
to bring reconciliation to his words, regardless of the depth of this challenge. We discover that Paul stated that he followed the whole law of God and even taught the law of God. We show how Peter, a person who knew Paul better than any today, warned us of how Paul's writings regarding the law were difficult to understand and how his words are misunderstood easily. If one did not know the Old Testament well enough even 2,000 years ago, Peter warned that misunderstanding Paul would cause one to break the law of God in ignorance. We find that even in the first century, Paul was constantly falsely accused of not keeping the law of God. We even see James defending Paul, proving that Paul kept and taught the law of God. This is all in the Bible. One of the keys to unlocking the context of Paul's letters is to have a proper understanding of the debates of the first century. In this series, we will cross-reference several passages to reveal the ongoing dialogue which occurred between the parties involved. We show how Paul was constantly accused of not teaching the whole law of God, and when he was confronted with such accusations, he always claimed to follow and teach the whole law of God, even to the point of paying for sacrifices at the temple to prove such accusations to be false. Does this all sound too crazy to be true? We implore you to test everything, to challenge your faith and seek truth, not tradition. The first teaching in the Pauline Paradox series is titled, Is the Majority Ever Wrong? We address the first mental barrier, which is a misplaced confidence in the self-professed doctrinal experts who claim to understand Paul's words. Then, in the teaching, the Paul you never knew, we reveal words of Paul that many never see, the real Paul, the Paul that kept and taught the whole law of God. Following that, we detail in the teaching, why is Paul so difficult to understand? The root cause of why so many misunderstand Paul. This then leads us into the teaching, which law Paul, which to the surprise of many, exposes the fact that Paul was not always just talking about the law of God when he spoke of the law. In fact, Paul mentions at least seven laws. The law of God, the law of sin, the law of sin and death, the law of the spirit of life, the law of faith, the law of righteousness, the law of Christ. What are all these laws and how do they relate to one another? More importantly, how does it help us understand Paul's letters in respect to the law of God to help us avoid the error of the lawless that Peter warns us about in reading Paul's letters? It is in that that we then, verse by verse, dive deep into Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, and more to solve and reconcile the Pauline paradox once and for all. We make it available to you in one series so you can test all of this yourself to the unchanging Word of God. For more free information, including these free video teachings, please visit us at testeverything.net. It is because of you our generous supporters who make it possible to offer these high quality teachings completely free of charge. If you feel led to support 119 Ministries so that we can continue this effort, please visit testeverything.net and click on the Support 119 tab. Learn how you can partner with us to take the whole Word of God to the nations.